Hi, I am Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan and uh, in this video I am just going to show you unedited, uncut video of a routine cataract surgery that I did, do every day and uh, so this is a younger patient around say 50 year old and has developed cataract so I have to remove this cataract and put a advanced monofocal IL or monofocal plus which is Renner EMV. So the choice of lens depends on what patient really needs after the surgery. So this patient uh, has to drive at night for his occupation and uh, also needs crisp vision for the distance. So uh, I have a choice between either a extended depth of focus aisle or a monofocal aisle. And here the patient has chosen a monofocal aisle because uh, his particular need for night driving for long distances. So we have chosen Renner EMV because it's a monofocal plus eye valve. So where the there is some additional depth of focus say around 0.75 to 1.25 diopter which a patient will be able to have after the surgery. So my routine steps as you have seen include use of hylucote which is like viscote but more viscous and I am going to use the Haldipurkar forceps which is a cross section forceps to create a capsule axis of around 5 millimeters and which is you can see as I have centered it around the Purkinje image the central Purkinje image where the patient is trying to fix on the microscope light so if the patient is cooperative it's really really useful when you are doing the capsule axis the first hydro dissection wave I do multiple and uh, I also rotate the nucleus in the, with the same cannula. In hydro dissection, I think it is very important if you can do a cortex cleaving hydro dissection that really helps uh, during the nucleus management as well as for cortex aspiration. Now I am waiting for the phaco probe to be ready. I am going to use my usual 1.5 mm long Patwardhan's chopper. It's like a elongated Sinsky in the sense that it doesn't have a sharp tip or it doesn't have a ball tip like a blunt chopper as well. So it is some kind of a in between chopper. So I can do both horizontal chops with this or I can do vertical chops also with this. So either of the techniques can be used so that makes it more versatile. So here. I am planning primary chop so there it goes into the center of the nucleus exactly and I can chop. So I use around I think 450 to 500 vacuum in the panel mode here so that gives a nice grip on the nucleus when I am chopping and you can see when I chop my left hand moves more than my right hand so which is very important. I make sure I make at least 4 to 5 pieces and the last piece I try to pull it out uh, in the chop mode itself. Chop mode I am using only longitudinal power which is again very important for chopping and now I have gone to quadrant removal I am using 700 vacuum here with 45 fixed flow rate which makes the things very 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 fast and you can see within probably 10 to 15 seconds I can emulsify the entire all fragments so the last fragment I think was remaining so I go in again uh, it's important that I go in completely again so irrigation is inside before I remove that last piece. Otherwise, if the irrigation is compromised in this step, the PC might just come up and hit your FACO tip. As my assistant is shifting to the IA probe, so uh, just remember that the surgery need not be very hastily done. Every step you can see, I am giving proper time for completing each and every step perfectly. So it makes things in fact faster than if you hurry things up, hurry the steps. And you can see that when I'm doing the cortex aspiration, I'm going from one part to other, like in a swiping motion. So the entire cortex gets released from the equator and I can remove it without damaging the equator or the capsular rim. That's very important. And uh, also I uh, try to, you know, pull the cortex little down rather than only centripetally. So that kind of cleaves the cortex from the bag without damaging the zonules or putting pull on the zonules. I always use 1.4% hyaluronate for injecting the IOL. The advantage is that it comes out as a bulk. So the chance of remnant visco is less. And also the bag is well you know, open. Now I am using EMV 
toric and many times uh, surgeons have difficulty in injecting it because they tend to rotate it while the IOL is going in. You just have to keep it straight, let that you know leading haptic go straight and then itself it will unfold in the bag. So it's very quick and uh, it's a preloaded system so you don't have to worry about any other thing. Once it is in the bag I am going to remove. So just watch my IA probe going into the angles so that the Hylio coat which I have used initially I want to completely wash it off from the angles because angles are the places where I, we have not used much of FACO. So that these are the places where usually this Hylio coat stays even if you have done you know FACO for a prolonged time or aspirated lot of visco. So that these are the areas where I first move my probe around and you can see from the bag I could remove it very quickly because it was 1.4% hyaluronate in the bag which is a cohesive OVD so it comes out in a bulk in single go. So the advantage of using these good OVDs is that not only you protect the endothelium also you completely remove the OVD at the end and that means the post operatively patient has very very quiet you know post operative period patient don't feel pain irritation redness photophobia anything and that adds to you know the patient satisfaction because ultimately patients are happy not just with the vision that they get but also for with a quiet post operative period more on my youtube channel thank you so much